Hello everybody and welcome to this Train Sim World 3 news video. Today I am going to be having a look at the possibilities for Preston to Blackpool, which is a new route that is coming soon to Train Sim World 3. So a quick overview, uh, it is a regional north English Railway. Uh, it has two branches, although we'll probably get one. And there's lots of rolling stock variety, but again, we probably won't get much of that. Um, the route, so as I mentioned, uh, there are two branch lines. Um, this, All of these figures don't include um, the unelectrified branch line, which goes into Blackpool South. Uh, so the electrified line into Blackpool North is 28 kilometres or 17 and a half miles long. It is fully electrified and has 13 stations. It's all fully double track and it terminates at Blackpool North. And it also connects to the West Coast Main Line at its eastern end at Preston. Uh, I realise I've forgotten to mention how we know that we're getting this route. Uh, there are some new Steam DB depot dumps, which uh, confirmed many things like the Class 707 uh, and some new BNSF packs. And this, and the BNSF stuff was confirmed recently and the Loco bundle was confirmed in the latest roadmap. Uh, they haven't spoken about the 700 or Preston to Blackpool, but we know they're coming. So, um, so uh, good to keep an eye out for any future official updates, but we know it's coming. It definitely is coming. Um, and you can watch my video on the latest uh, depot leak um, under the Train Sim World 3 news playlist. Uh, so we'll have a look at the route map. So as you can see, the uh, second unelectrified branch line I've put in grey there, just for a bit of context. Um, Maybe those, yeah, those 13 stations must have included that. Oh, my information is so, bold, uh, so rubbish. I'm very sorry about that. Um, so we start at Preston in the east. Then we go to Salic, Kirkham and Wesson. Uh, Poulton, Lafald, Leighton and Blackpool North. And then there's obviously the other branch line, which is unelectrified, uh, which is Moss Side, Lytham, Ansel and Fairhaven. St Anne's on the Sea, Squires Gate, Blackpool Pleasure Beach, and Blackpool South. But again, I don't expect we will receive that section of the line. So don't get your hopes up too high for that one. Next, we'll have a look at the rolling stock. As I mentioned earlier, there is a huge amount of rolling... Well, not huge, but there's a lot of different types of trains that run on this line. 221s, 390s, 195s, 331s, 319s, 150s, 156s, 158s, all of that kind of stuff. Um, of course, I don't think we'll get all of that. I'm, I'm certain we won't get all of that. Um, and so this is just a little speculation of what I think we have a chance of getting. Um, so we'll start, of course, with the class 331. These are uh, built between 2017 and 2020 by CAF. So um, they're very recent trains. They're not fantastic trains, but you know, they do the job. Um, they're built cheaply and quickly so they could get the paces out, uh, out of the way. They entered service in 2019. They are part of the CAF Civity family. 43 of them have been built. There are three cars in a Dash Zero and four cars in a Dash One. They're operated by Northern. They have a maximum speed of 100 miles an hour, which is fairly typical of a train of its type. And that's 161 kilometers per hour. They've got a power output of 1,760 kilowatts, which is decent. They have uh, overhead line equipment so they've got pantograph and that picks up from the 25 kilovolts 50 hertz overhead line and they have the standard aws tpws and dsd 
Uh, so not too much going on there. It's just a fairly bog standard modern electric train. At least it's not an Electro Star. Hey, a um, bit of variation. First calf train in the uh, in the series, I believe. If we were to get that. Now the other train. Uh, one of the other. Well, this is the other electric train that Northern run on this route. So if it's if, it's, if the route is set after electrification, then it's almost certain to include either the 331 or this the class 319 these trains were built between 1987 and 1988 and they entered service in 1987 they're part of the Brel Mark 3 family 86 were built originally for Thameslink but they've shuffled operators a while since a lot since then four cars in each set they're operated now by northern but there are only about 20 of them with northern uh, they have the maximum speed of 100 again fairly standard they uh oh that's 161 kilometers per hour again power output of 990 kilowatts so almost half that of the 331s but they're probably also a bit lighter and less clunky uh they've also got the same overhead line uh, specifications and the same safety specifications now this is what I think could be another piece of rolling stock because we're getting it anyway so generally the trend that we see in new routes is one piece of new rolling stock and one piece of recycled rolling stock that's maybe been touched up a little bit so this new piece of rolling stock uh, oh, sorry, this recycled piece of rolling stock for this route, I think is highly likely to be either a 150 or a 158. I don't think it's a 150 because it would require a little bit of work. Um, but the 158s are highly requested um, and I think they'll probably reuse this. And we're getting it with the middle and main line as well. So I think, I think there's a chance there. Uh, they were built between 1989 and 1992 entered service in 1990 they're part of the super sprinter family 180 of them were built there are either two or three cars in each set they're operated by northern they have a maximum speed of 90 miles an hour which is 145 kilometers per hour they have a power output of only 260 to 300 kilowatts their power source is of course underfloor diesel engines and in terms of safety they have the usual AWS TPWS and DSD but some of them have ETCS for the Cumbrian lines I believe no some of the lines in sort of Wales and it must be Cumbria I have uh, ETCS as a replacement for a radio electric token block so um, yeah they use ETCS now so some of them have ETCS, um, but I, if we get this, I don't think it'll be the ETCS variant. And finally, uh, well, not finally, actually. Penultimately, should you buy this? Well, if you like provincial routes, then maybe. Um, if it looks good from the various teasers and articles and streams that we get from Dovetail, then yeah, go go for it. And um, if the rolling stock is good otherwise, probably not. It's probably, you know, I don't think there'll be any revolutionary features coming in this one. Um, so if it's not really interesting to you, then I'm sure it's fine to give it a miss. I don't think it'll be game-breaking in any way um, to the same standard as, like, London Commuter or something. And finally, for real this time, uh, expected information. None of this is official, but it's some of it, you know, very strong speculation on my part so it'll cost 30 pounds 40 dollars us and 60 dollars australian it will release in april or may this year no sooner than that it could be after and of course it'll be full of bugs which probably will go unrectified um so yeah that's about it there's not much more to say if you have enjoyed this video please do consider subscribing it really does help uh, we're so close to 2,000 now. We can get it by the end of March. Um, so if you're not subscribed and you enjoyed this video, please, 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 please do subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you for watching. Have a lovely day and goodbye.